I, I, I mean, 30 no, years. No, I get it. I'm talking about like Gene Simmons. And I'm like, no, no her, Nancy's brother-in-law, John. Like, he, so he's going to be buried in the National Cemetery in a kiss coffin. Yeah. He's already purchased it. Wow. Yeah. Something ran interesting. Gene Simmons is worth more than Dave Grohl, Axl Rose, James Hetfield, and Lars Ulrich. Doesn't surprise me one bit. And Ozzy Osbourne. Yeah. And this is from like 2012. Well, no. Gene Simmons is worth $300 million. Right. And it's odd to note that the list ha- also has the entire band Kiss worth three hundred million as well. Yeah. So Gene has three hundred million, and then Kiss itself yeah. is three hundred million on. Um, Hetfield and Lars are like two hundred and twenty, but that doesn't include songwriting credits. Right. Hammett's like one forty. Ozzy's at 220. And he doesn't take into account Sharon's wealth either. Right. Tony Naomi's at number 50 at 140. Page and Plant both came in at 170. Roger Waters. Oh, man. Roger Waters is like 290 million. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. But, but like, like, it's amazing. Like, Gilmore's like 160. Yeah. Like Gene Simmons is such, such an amazing job of branding Kiss and then protecting that brand. Like, right. if you infringe upon the Kiss copyright in any way, shape, or form, he has no problem litigating against you. Right. Not a one. Okay. I have a full list real quick. I'll just do okay. top 10. Okay. Who do you think is number one? Seriously. Are they a lot? Is this, uh, what's that? Quite honestly. Who do you think? Uh, uh, Does this include dead people? Uh, Does Keith Richards count? No, I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Now they're all living. They're all living? Okay. So far. No, one's dead. Yeah, one's dead. So far. So at the top of that list, I'm I would guess. <laughs> That's so weird. Not weird. You, it's not weird. These number one. It's just the list is weird. Okay. Like I I would I would guess that number one, like someone like like share. <laughs> no. Okay. Think unweird. Unweird. Okay. I'm, I'm, I mean, I, I really wasn't thinking weird. There. I kind of put that in your head. Okay. Um, in the world. In the world. Okay. Yeah, not just the United States. Right. Um, Julio Iglesias. Yes. No, Paul okay. McCartney. Paul McCartney. Okay. One point two billion. Okay, that makes sense. Bono's. He, 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 huh? he bought the the Beatles catalog, so. <laughs> right. Bono's at seven hundred million. Okay. Elton John five hundred. This is surprising to me, but I, I mean, I get it. Jimmy Buffett is number four, five hundred million. And it is surprising to an extent, but like he's done such a job of like marketing, marketing Margaritaville. Yeah, but as a he's brand, worth, he's worth more than Mick Jagger. Anyway, Mick Jagger's next three hundred and sixty. Springsteen's uh-huh. three fifty. Ringo Starr is 350. Keith Richards, 340. I don't know. Uh, Bjorn Alvaeus? I don't know. 300 million. Dave Matthews, 300 million. Gene Simmons, three. Jovi's, three. Kiss is three. Sting's, three. Phil Collins is 260. Clapton's 250. The Edge is at 240. Rod Stewart's on the list. I can't even believe Rod Stewart's even... even. Uh, he must have had some smart investing because I, I can't even... 
see how he's even, you know what I mean? Well, like, here's the thing, like, especially with, like, everybody you're talking about, it's not about what they're doing now. It's about their back catalog. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. Like, I was you know, like, isn't he playing up in Greensburg? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, but but at the same <laughs> time, like, how how often do you watch, like, a romantic comedy or something, you end up hearing a Rod Stewart song? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, it's shit like that that, like, keeps people... Yeah, it's shit like that that keeps people in, in the money. Like, right. These older artists, I mean, everybody you're talking about is, like, over... You know, except for, like, Bono and Edge is, like, over 60. You know? And it's like, what have any of these people done recently that would... Me- you know, get them money. Well, it's, it's not. It's their back catalog that they use. Right. You know. Bowie's in at 22 at 230. Then comes James and Lars, Ozzy. Agnetha Faltzkog. I don't know. Uh-huh. Henry's here. George Michael. Fish is worth 200. Robbie Williams is 200. Dylan's only 180. It's weird. Hendrix is worth 175. Yeah. Well, it's like, I mean, you know, I was asking, or, you know, about dead people because, like, I mean, you know, Elvis, Prince, and Michael Jackson, like, that, their, their back catalogs are worth a ton. Yeah. Charlie Watt. Axel Rose is still at 150. It's interesting. It's an interesting list. Anyway, yeah, Axel Rose is on the list because he invested in chicken futures or something. Like, really? Yeah, like chicken grease. Nice. <laughs> so, that guy, that guy's got to put on some weight. <laughs> yeah, he's portly. <laughs> hey, dude, they said his concert was perfect. I don't doubt it, but still, it's like one of those things where it's like, like I remember Axel, like the Axel Rose I remember was like this skinny motherfucker that like was like trying to pick a fight with everybody, and now the only thing he's picking a fight with is a chicken wing. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah, I'll take meth, Axel Rose. Yeah. Versus. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, because I mean, you remember? It. I mean, Welcome to the Jungle. Woo. Yeah. He was fucking rough. Yeah. I mean, look at rough. Oh, yeah. Anyway. Now video going for patience. That. Remember that yeah. video? Video for patience? Yeah. He looked he worse looked... than Welcome to the Jungle, though. Oh, yeah. But still, like, that patience video, it looked like he was in a fucking opium den. <laughs> I mean, <yeah. laughs> You know? The only thing was missing was the fucking hookah. <laughs> yeah, I know. He was, but I mean, like, I'll never forget. When I first saw Welcome to the Jungle, I was like, who's this fucking methed out ginger? <laughs> What's going on with this cat? Yeah. yeah exactly. And then he opened his mouth and it was like, oh, shit. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I, you just can't, you just can't say enough about the music. I just, it's incredible. I, mean, I will say this much. He 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 certainly outlasted. Like I honestly thought he'd be dead in ten years. So did I. Like I thought he was the next Jim Morrison. No, I think he's the ne- next Keith Richards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I know you're I know what you're I saying. Mean, like, you're right. You just can't kill some people. I yeah. mean Keith Richards shouldn't be even walking. No. You know? And it's just no matter what that guy has done to himself, I guess it just it doesn't matter. All that Jack Daniel just preserves them. It must. It's just weird <laughs> to me. <laughs> I'll never I mean, forget when I, when people I, people said that you know like I mean I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'll never dethrone them from this crown. But you know, in all essence, Motley Crue should be dead too. Yeah. But well, Six did die a couple times. But yeah. Um. When it comes down to it, though, you know, Guns N' Roses, man, they fucking, they did a lot of shit. I mean, a lot of stuff. With three and a half albums. Right. Compared to what Crew did over the course of 
six, I would say, right? Not including yeah. when they got clean. Right. Maybe four, five, six. But because uh, they were still fucked up on girls. Well, you, you get the feel good. Yeah, feel good is kind of like their thing. Yeah. I don't know. But, man, you talk about partying rough, but you know Guns N' Roses fucking let it all out. Yeah, I mean, half, they, they, they were Led Zeppelin-esque. Yeah, I mean, half of them were on heroin. Drummer's yeah. dead now, right? I think so, yeah. I don't know. I'll have to look that on. But anyway, let's go. Let's move past this. <laughs> <laughs> well, si- since we're talking music, um, let me... Uh... <laughs> get this article here so one of the the greatest record labels in hip-hop history death row records yeah. is now owned by hasbro get out of here i am not kidding um <laughs> On December 30th, while everyone was busy posting aggressively filtered pictures of themselves from both ends of the last decade, the Hasbro Toy Company completed its $3.8 billion acquisition of Entertainment One Limited, a Toronto-based multimedia company. Although the massive cash deal was presumably so the toy giant could get his hands on the E1-produced kids show like Peppa Pig and PJ Masks, one of the (laughs) other properties it picked up in the purchase was music label Death Row Records. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, so I'm just imagining, like, with, like, every, like, My Little Pony purchase, you get a copy of The Chronic. Nice. You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, in addition to e- E1, the addition of E1 accelerates our blueprint strategy by expanding our brand portfolio of E1's beloved global preschool brands, which is funny enough that like E1 owned like Peppa Pig, but also owned Death Row Records. <laughs> nice. You know, they want to talk about crossover appeal right there. Um, right, right. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Snoop just shows up on Peppa Pig, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um. <laughs> Uh, but creating additional opportunities for long-term profitable growth. Um, substantial synergies, a great cultural fit. Yes, the company behind My Little Pony and Furby now also owns a, mu- a music catalog for, for, that includes Bitches Ain't Shit and Murder Was the Case. Uh, Hasbro, as everybody who has watched Saturday Morning Cartoons knows, is responsible for the now iconic toys like Transformers, Power Rangers, G.I. Joe, Mr. Potato Head, the Monopoly board game series, uh, the Magic the Gathering series. Death Row Records was co-founded in 1991 by Dr. Dre and Suge Knight. Over the next five years, its reputation was fully cemented thanks to the also iconic releases from Dr. Dre the Chronic, Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style, and Tupac's all eyes on me. Uh, according to Rolling Stone, E1 already had a profitable independent music division, which generated more than $30 million in revenue during the first quarter of 2019. E1 Music, formerly known as Coke Records, was had released albums from artists ranging from DJ Khalid and Public Enemy to Opatath and Hatebreed. Wow. Hatebreed. Yeah. Cook also released a debut album from awful but endearing uh, American Idol contestant William Hung. Huh. So, now, I mean, you 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 are more of the uh, the hip hop aficionado than I am. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you had NWA on your fucking top ten. I don't want to hear it. <laughs> like so. What, what what do you see like obviously I mean I don't see how there's any sort of crossover appeal here at all like I, I don't see how you can put any of this in the in the children's <laughs> entertainment I don't think it is I think it's just an acquisition right it's, it's, I mean they, they bought a company this is part of what they got yeah like what do you like can you see like them like selling like this music division off like or do you think like Hazard looks at it and says 
fuck it, there's money to be made here. Let's let's figure out a way to do it. Yeah, I mean, 